This presentation is intended to convey a vision, a big, hairy, audacious goal that will require you to suspend disbelief for a few minutes. The goal is no less than to save the world, to design a system that is scalable and repeatable that will act as a template for others to follow. Think globally and act locally will be my mantra. At this point, I'd like to acknowledge Bill Gates. First, this PowerPoint presentation is based on the slides he produced for his TED talk back in 2010. He made them freely available to download, ensuring that I wouldn't have to start from scratch. This is truly the nature of innovation. I'd also like to thank him for giving me the confidence to think big to realise there are others engaged in equally large ambitions and for asking me to join in with the effort. If you haven't watched this TED talk, I think you should, but the following gives the gist of it. I'm going to talk today about energy and climate. And the equation on CO2 is actually a, a very straightforward one. If you sum up the CO2 that gets emitted, that leads to a temperature increase. And that temperature increase leads to some very negative effects. This equation has four factors, a little bit of multiplication. So you've got a thing on the left, CO2, that you want to get to zero. And that's going to be based on the number of people, the services each person's using on average, the energy on average for each service, and the CO2 being put out per unit of energy. Now, this is going to be a key one. And this is the amount of CO2 put out for each unit of energy. And so the question is, can you actually get that to zero? But my key point here is that we're going to have to work on each of these five. And we can't give up any of them uh, because they, they look daunting, because they all have significant challenges that this thing that's half the cost with no CO2 gets invented, this is the wish I would pick. This is the one with the greatest impact. So while Bill Gates is keen on concentrating on nuclear energy as his Save the World project, he calls for others to work on other forms of energy that don't output CO2. Keeping on the theme of inspiration for my global vision, I'm drawn to the TEDx talk of Gunter Pauli, Again, if you haven't watched this talk, you should do so. But the gist with respect to my vision is his systems thinking approach and his desire to solve multiple problems all at once. My name is Gunter, Gunter Pauli. I'm a Belgian, if you wonder where I come from. And um, I'm one of those modern day nomads. I travel the world because I want to make a difference wherever I can and change as much as possible as fast as possible. Forget about the fact that what we were doing in the past the right way is going to bring us to the future. It is not. My quest today is to see how can we design a new competitive model, a business model based on sustainability whereby we define sustainability as the capacity to respond to the needs of all with what we have. So my work today is very much focusing on doing all of this at once. That good? Yes, that good. Because once you start working in a system, once you start making the connections amongst all the dots. And he goes on to tell of all the advantages of taking a systems approach, solving many issues simultaneously, and in his cases, using a combination of manufactured and biological processes to meet his goals. So what are my goals broken down from global to local? So what are our goals globally? Goals for across the whole of the world. We want to template the sustainable living that can be stamped out across the world. We want net, net positive energy generation from living space replacing fossil fuel sources. We want a reduction of the cost in lives and economic consequences of climate change. What about national? What are our national goals? We want to have some control over interest rates and exchange rates. 
We want economic protection from the collapse of unsustainable housing price bubbles. And we want a contribution to international obligations on climate change. We want ex exportable intellectual property delivering increased foreign exchange. And we want enhanced New Zealand 100% brand identity and actually have something that supports it. Regionally, we're after a solution to a general housing shortage and a low cost housing solution to ensure social stability. What about locally? What are we, our goals locally? Well, when locally, we're talking about Walkworth. Roads and congestion, particularly Hill Street, is one of the main objectives. Education, Maharangi College is overcrowded and needs to be expanded. Recreational facilities, swimming, equestrian, cycling, clean fill dumping constraints for imminent road infrastructure builds needs to be fixed. We need to support local residential demand for housing. We need to support employment in the area. We need to take care of the logistical constraints on aggregate transport for the Puhoi to Walkworth Road of National Significance. Constraints on potable water distribution and constraints on wastewater treatment need to be addressed. For want of a better way of filling in detail on my vision, I'll start with local and work back to global. Walkworth Wastewater Treatment Plant is near capacity. Local aquaculture can't risk further discharge from expansion of treatment facilities into the Maharangi River. Current thinking is to expand facilities at Snell's Beach, pipe Walkworth waste to this expanded site, and extend discharge piping into Cowell Bay. This is all estimated to cost $50 million and probably more than a decade to execute. Given that Walkworth is targeted for a five-fold population growth in two decades, and that expansion can't start in earnest until this facility is complete, following conventional means of wastewater treatment precludes the larger goals and sits as a mammoth supply constraint in the face of huge demand for housing for the area. So my vision includes distributed wastewater treatment. I favour the Cinderella incinerator toilet, or black water, in combination with reverse osmosis treatment of grey water at this stage of my investigation. Two to three toilets can be afforded for the savings made by not being connected to a reticulated community-wide system. A biological system, such as that offered by Eloy Water, is also suitable for small lot development. And a subdivision-wide energy cogeneration wastewater system, where the output are clean drinking water and electricity, have their appeal, but don't fit with our current financing model and decrease resilience across the system. Any one of these distributed systems could replace the $50 million spend currently proposed. Effectively, instead of an upfront capital cost requiring financing with inherent interest charges, each new residential or commercial building builds out the wastewater infrastructure, exchanging developer contribution fees with a technology spend for each property. Admittedly, if we go with an incineration system of Blackwater, we are left with grey water to contend with. A system such as this copes with much of the issue. Water from the kitchen sink and dishwasher need to pass through a grease trap prior to entering the grey water recycling system. If the output from the system passed through reverse osmosis filtration, the resulting water would be drinkable. Unfortunately, we don't think the market is quite ready for that degree of recycling just yet. At this stage, we anticipate reuse of a drip feed irrigation system and clothes washing. Potable water from rain can be collected and stored and made pure through a whole of house inline reverse osmosis filter system, possibly in combination with inline ultraviolet treatment. If need be, water can be pumped from artesian sources in times of low rainfall for additional resilience of the system. Okay, so we've dealt with wastewater and potable water possibilities. Now let's look at the roads. The Puhoi to Walkworth Road of National Significance, Expressway, Holiday Highway, 
or whatever name it will get next, is slated for construction start in 2016 with completion date of 2021. It is pretty much accepted that this road will happen. The Hill Street State Highway 1 intersection has been the bane of the Walkworth community for over a decade. $15 million were destined to be spent on fixing congestion here, but it has been put on hold to see what happens to the traffic movement as a result of the completed Puhoi to Walkworth connection. The Matakana Road to State Highway 1 connection is an idea that has been around for a while. It was costed by Rodney Council and was included in the mix by Auckland Council when the unitary plan process started. The dotted line at the top of the picture shows a route that the Council thought was made sense early on. The idea of a Sandspit to Matakana Road link has also been around for a while. Back in around 2006, owners of the Chestnut Farm put forward a route through their property. Unfortunately, they became insolvent and the idea floundered. Our family resurrected the idea, promoting it with the Auckland Council's Transport Committee back in 2011, and to all council unitary plan and budgetary processes in more recent times. Auckland Transport has recognised the idea and invested the route shown in purple. We, on the other hand, have another route in mind. Walkworth has a plan to grow, so let's get the roads in place before it does. We need to bypass Hill Street with a northern ring road. The expressway to Walkworth is going to get built. It will intersect State Highway 1, just north of the township. Once built, a large proportion of the traffic, once destined to pass through the congested Hill Street intersection, will pass the town to the west. So this shows the infamous Hill Street intersection just above the Walkworth label and my choice of a ring road diverting traffic from Matakana and the bays destined north or south of Walkworth away from this intersection. New Zealand Transport Authority shows this type of on-ramp, off-ramp concept in the design of the expressway at State Highway 1. I've simply added a direct connection to the roundabout to facilitate speedy flow of traffic not destined for Walkworth. Traffic destined for Matakana and the northeastern coastal communities would simply take a left at Matakana Road. Traffic destined for the highly populated Snells Beach and Algies Bay areas would continue on this proposed link, easing holiday goers and residential commuters drive considerably. They may well get to the Sandspit Road via an intersection such as this. Introducing landowner stakeholders. Craig Clark, the start of the road. Roger and Miriam Stevenson, this is just one of their blocks. Alan and Jan Stevenson, not related to Roger and Miriam. Alistair Membry on intergenerational land. Les Patterson. The Rodney Lime Works. The Golf Club. A landowner, uh, Churchill possibly, is his name, but it's Chinese owned. Again, Alan and Jan Stevenson. And Shelley Trotter from Solway. There is a lot more to convey on roads, but I will speak to that later. I'd like to now address education. This is the Maharingi catchment area for public schooling taken from a report carried out in May of this year. From page 48 on this report we note, 
The planned growth of Walkworth in the Auckland plan will create vol growth pressure in the secondary sector beyond the current capacity of Maharangi College. The expected slow growth rate over the next five years mentioned is only due to supply-side constraints. I believe acquiring additional land for expansion or exploring joint venture with a tertiary provider needs to happen sooner rather than later. So to that end, we have presented the following to the Ministry of Education and a variety of private school stakeholders. This is a planned view of the proposed development showing where the school would be. You can see here that uh, it's on Sandspit Road with um, Walkworth to the left and uh, Snell's Beach going to the right. The uh, animation's now showing uh, the entrance to the proposed school. Soccer fields and hockey fields on the right. These buildings would be anticipated to be uh, lecture blocks, um, classrooms. Um, you can see that uh, we've got tennis courts and uh, a basketball court and a rugby ground in the background. This building here could be a school hall with administration block. And um, as we zoom out, we can see the whole development with uh, a proposed retirement village or some other intensive um, uh, housing development. And in the far top right-hand corner, you can see where Walkworth is. And this is uh, the first stage of the development with a road uh, that is going to be a loop road through to the motorway. Uh, with residential off the side of that road, um, obviously that would probably be more intensive. Private schools like ACG Parnell College, Uanui College, and St Kentigan have been approached. We all know there's a demand for housing in Auckland, but what about Walkworth? The Dunedin born Dolph Deruth, you remember the name? He's never had a traditional job in his life. But he's now a multi millionaire and he's uber passionate about helping others take the same path. So, what's his secret? Jill Higgins was very keen to find out. We all love our little slice of paradise. Dolph Deruth just has more to love than most. So, how many properties do you own? 40 tenancies, something like that. Yeah, and then commercial properties? Probably a bit more, 50 or 60. He's back in New Zealand to share his experience and he's chosen to meet here. His top tip for where to invest. So if you're from another part of the country, you're probably wondering what's so special about Walkworth. Well, so am I. The locals say, I think it's that community feel that everybody seems to sort of know everybody. The extensions of the motorways make it easier for people to, to commute. Very nice shops and you can get almost anything here. For Dolph, it's one of the fastest growing populations. But estate agents say it's too late. They have missed the boat. When Auckland went mad, the next step was Walkworth. You know, I've heard that so often in the past. We'll look back on today's values and say, why didn't we realize that they were so cheap? So it's still the place to be. It's still the place to be. Chinese buyers are already paying four times the going rate for rurally zoned land in the Walkworth area. Provision for employment for new residents to walk with is vital to curb a massive increase to the number of commuters to Auckland. We need a structure plan that provides for employment areas. In the north, there's already a private plan change in action to create an employment zone. If we overlay a sustainable living special housing area development shown in green, the ability to walk and cycle to work from a brand new residential community becomes obvious. Right, so we have some land suitable for employment with a commercial zoning private plan change on it. And we have some land right next door suitable for residential development with an application for it to become a special housing area. Very special it is proposed to be. Completely off-grid with respect to wastewater and potable water. Net positive in electricity production right next door to a commercial area requiring electricity. Houses at a density that meet 25-year population goals for the area. The road proposed to pass through the area, which will solve the problem of getting aggregate for construction of the expressway to site. This can be achieved without causing unacceptable congestion at the local traffic pinch point. 
this new road can double as an access to the new residential development.